Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you a tutorial on how I made these cherry soda nails which I think are perfect for summer. I've only made five nails so far so I'm gonna make the other five nails for my right hand. And as you can see, the thumb and the ring finger are the same design and the index and the pinky are also the same design. So today I'm really gonna show you how to do these three nails. The first one here is a encapsulated bubble design. This has been going viral around Korea and is super popular right now, super trendy. And it's a bit tricky to do, but I'll show you how to do it. This one here is just a standard glitter nail with some little charms. Um, but there's also some chrome stars here and I'll show you how I do those. And lastly, this has this design has also been really trendy lately. It's kind of got like a 3D blobby wavy kind of effect, but also like with a little chrome shimmer to it. And yeah, so I'm gonna show you how I make these nails and let's get started. So the press on tips that I use are canoe tips. We're making these as press on nails. And I'm just gonna go in and pick out my sizes. There are 12 of them here. I already know my size, but uh, typically you would put these over top of your own nail and just make sure that the side walls cover perfectly and that your natural nail is fully covered. If you're in between sizes, then always size up and then file them down. So I'm just gonna pick out my sizes since So I went ahead and prepped the nails already, they've been buffed and I've added a base coat as well. I'm gonna start off with the thumb design. The center of this nail design has a pink blushing effect and I'm gonna use Yogurt Gel's Pink Syrup Gel. Just dab a blob in the center of the nail and then I use a liner brush to slowly spread it out. This method works the best using a syrup gel because they are less opaque and they will spread and blend out easily. Make sure to take your time blending this out really well because I used to actually hate this trend when I saw versions where it wasn't blended out and it kind of looked like pimples. So really take your time to blend it out thoroughly. Wipe off any excess polish that's on your brush if you need to. Once the layer is thin, I like to use little strokes to further blend it out all around the edges. You can also use a gentle tapping motion to make the strokes disappear. Once you're happy with it, you can cure it under your lamp and then do one more layer. The purpose of this blushing design is to kind of cover the white part of your nail and it'll make the cherry pop. Next, we will paint the cherries. I'm using my D-Gel Full Painting Pots. These are my go-to gels for any kind of intricate nail art. They usually give you full coverage in one to two coats. These pots also have a little stopper inside to keep you from making a mess if you happen to tip it over. Now I'm painting the cherries. Of course, you can use a ball tool to do this easier. And I'm just making sure that the size matches my other nail. Here, once we're done, and now I'm taking the Vitro Medical Polish, and this will be to line the stems. Now we will add a layer of No Wipe Top Coat so that we can buff our chrome powder over top. The chrome powder I'm using is by Mabusa and it's the Elegant Gold. It's different than the typical metal gold chrome powders. It has an iridescence and clearness to it. Once it's all covered, we're going to use the Jimby Crazy Top Thick. It's a non-wipe overlay gel. And we're just going to pick up a blob of the gel and then paint on these waves.
the thick gel will start to disperse a little bit so if you don't want it dispersing too much then you can cure it as you go I love using this overlay gel as opposed to other builder gels because it is no white. It just makes things easier and saves me a step. Once cured, take some alcohol and just wipe the whole nail thoroughly. This will just remove the chrome powder off all the other areas that isn't secured underneath the waves. And now I'm going back in with some more crazy top gel just to make the cherries 3D as well. And this is the completed nail. Now let's do the middle nail. This is Myth Mellow's new glitter collection called Starlight. This one has a pretty pink kind of chrome tint to it, which I thought really matched these nails. I did two layers of this glitter polish. And while that's curing, I'm gonna coat my charm. These cute little heart charms are gifted to me by Daily Charm. And then I have this kind of pear-shaped green one, which I thought was perfect for the leaf. And I'm gonna cut up two short gold wire pieces. To adhere the charms, I'm using D-Gel's SIC Pumping Gel. I love this container in that you can pump the gel out as you need. I'm sorry, mine's a bit of a mess. Now that our charms are on, we're going to do the chrome stars. We'll have to do a matte base so that the chrome powder doesn't stick on the rest of the nail. Both of these matte polishes are made specifically so that chrome powders won't stick to it. I've used the Candy Plus one many times. The D-Rock one is new for me and I'm going to try it today. I swear I've tried so many matte polishes before I finally found these. Okay, so I'm just going to apply a thin layer at the top and also at the bottom. I'm not really going to bother going through every single spot on the nail because I'm only going to buff certain areas anyway. I'm going to use this Snow White Black to draw on the stars. It says 3D art, but it's not really 3D. I switched to my long liner brush because it's thinner and I really like this brush made by Leaf Gel. And I'm going to use the same gold powder to buff on the gold. The video here is a bit blurry, but then you can kind of see that none of the gold powder is sticking onto the glitter nail. It's just sticking to the black star. There we go, and I'm going to use a brush just to brush off any excess uh, loose powders that might be on the nails. An important tip for nice crystals is you don't ever want to top coat on top of them. They will lose the cutting, they won't be as pretty, they'll look kind of bubbly. Instead, you want to cover the edges with gel. And I love using the no wipe gel for this purpose so I don't have to top coat again. But just make sure that you completely surround the crystals so that they don't fall off. Finally, I'm just going to top coat the rest of the nail. And then we are done. Now let's move on to the bubble nail. First I'm going to do an ombre and I'm using the syrupy red color by Show Me. I'm going to cover half of the nail and then kind of like earlier on with the blushing nails, I'm just kind of pulling and tapping out the syrup gel. This syrup polish is actually stickier than the one I used earlier, so I probably could have used a thicker brush to do this a bit faster. It's important to blend this one out very well because you're only going to do one coat. You want it to be very transparent so that it looks like soda. 
and I'm going to top coat it so that I can add chrome powder. I think it is so satisfying to see the chrome powder kind of all gel together and blend in seamlessly. The snail is actually so pretty to me already and I don't show it here but I would add a top coat layer right here before this step. This is in case you make mistakes with the bubble nail so you don't have to redo the chrome. So now I'm using my Jimby Crazy Top again and I'm doing a thin layer of it over the whole nail. This is basically like a slip layer. Once that's done, you want to pick up more gel and you're just going to kind of float it down the nail by swiping left and right, kind of like hovering over the top of the nail. The slip layer will help it even out on its own. You can kind of see it on the side, it's a bit thicker now. Add more if you need to, you don't want it to be too thin, otherwise you won't be able to create bubbles within it. Now for the next step, you'll probably have to do some trial and error with your own gel and your own torch. I'm turning on my torch and I'm just going to wave it over the nail four times, really quickly. Four was the magical number for me, you'll have to try it out on your own. But basically, you just want the top layer to be cured and inside to still be uncured. Now I'm taking my syringe and I'm just poking air bubbles into the nail. If your gel layer earlier was too thin, a bubble will not be able to form. If the gel isn't cured enough, then your bubbles will pop. I also tested using my nail lamp to do it quickly for 2 seconds, but even that was too strong. The good thing is that because it's not all cured, if you don't like how it looks or it's not working, you can just peel it off and wipe it off and then try again. An important tip is to remember not to draw on your syringe while it's inside your nail. You will pick up your gel polish and it will clog your syringe. I did this many times by accident so then I used some acetone and drew that in instead to try to unclog the syringe. Which did work for me and I'm very happy because I only had one. After curing my bubble nail, I used a buffing block and I kind of just buffed all over the nail because I wanted it to be smoother. Sometimes the bubbles can kind of stick out a little and I didn't really like it so I buffed it out. But be careful not to buff out too much so that you kind of lose the bubble. Add a final layer of top coat and then we are done. I hope that you guys learned something useful in this tutorial. Subscribe if you would like to see more. Products that I've used are also linked below. And thank you for watching.